My name is Aaron Matthew Lariosa, DC-based contributor with Naval News. Today we're on the show floor of Sea Airspace 2025, and I'm currently here with Doug Denenny. I am the founder, owner, and CEO of Coaspar. Behind me is the Rackham missile, stands for Rapidly Adaptable Affordable Cruise Missile. It's an affordable mass cruise missile, and we have it on display here to show potential customers about how we can very quickly integrate and fly a cruise missile successfully and to be disruptive in the missile space. With existing uh, threats today, especially with the uh, global security environment, uh, what would be a use case for this system compared to uh, traditional systems such as uh, Jasmine and Tomahawk? Sure. So this is uh, air launch, so Jasmine's clearly air launch, Tomahawk not as much, but from an air launch perspective, the key is to have something that not only can go very far, carry a very large warhead, but bring a lot of fuel. And so what we've done is we've used a 3D printed process that can actually optimize the fuel space so that you can go extremely far, carry a warhead that matters, and have modularity so you can do different payloads. So it's very important for the not only the naval warfighters, but also the air forces of the world to have something that's affordable in a space where normally cruise missiles are very expensive. Would you also explain some context for our viewers, what Rackham stands for, what drove the requirement, uh, those sort of things? Sure. So for the Rackham, if you think about when you look at the cost of cruise missiles, not only being very expensive, but they have very exquisite capabilities. What's we found interesting, and you see this also in uh, current conflicts, is sometimes mass or quantity of weapons has a certain capability all of, all of itself that's just as important sometimes as some of the exquisites. So it's referred to as kind of like a high-low mix. So if you think about, although you never want to define your product of being a low mix, realize that that low mix, if it's very affordable and extremely capable, and if you can use reuse components that have been used in other systems, you then have something that can attack and even though all of them may not make it to the target, some of them will, as we've seen in current conflicts, and that creates a capability all of its own. So we're thrilled because just like any type of missile test, there's about 25 things that have to go right, and there are 25 things that can go wrong, and each one of them is sequential. So we are really thrilled to have a complete, thorough end-to-end uh, -end test. And what we were able to do is have it released from a tactical fighter aircraft, uh, descend, wings come out, turbojet engine flies away, and then it flew a route. And by flying a route, it demonstrates not only really good guidance, but also accuracy. And so it's extremely important to have accuracy all the way through the time of flight so that you can control that vehicle. And then in our case, we were thrilled just because it's, it's rare for these things to work. And in any flight test, um, there's been challenges for not only for our company and other companies. So it was a home run for us. This happened uh, fairly recently off the Gulf of uh, Mexico. Are there any uh, aspects that we could see uh, in future iterations? This size here is the size of a GBU-38 or Mark 82 class weapon. It's the smallest variant that we've flown and it's the only one that we have flown at this time. We know that there's need for longer ranges based on different theaters. So we have uh, plans in place to expand the size. By expanding the size, it allows you to add even additional features uh, that would provide other targeting capabilities to go after not only stationary targets, but also moving targets. I think right now, we've not really done a lot of um, media or press releases. So within the ecosystem of the current DOD, uh, we do believe that there is international interest, but we're at this time, we're focused right now primarily on the U.S. market. If the Air Force is ready to move forward with this, are you ready to bring this en masse to your customer? Yeah, so what's great about it, we have many partners. So ours, we're the prime contractor. We have subcontractors in 26 different states. We are here also uh, highlighting the 3D manufacturing that's done by a company called Divergent. Uh, Divergent Industries is based out of California, and they have vast experience in 3D printing automotive parts and have moved successfully with us into the defense space. So it's, a, it's, it's part of what's called Industrial Revolution 4.0, which means that you have the ability now to quickly iterate. So if you either want to change something with the missile or change on the, something on the inside or the outside, you can iterate very quickly. So that reduces touch labor, it increases the manufacturing throughput. And so it's a, it's a new way of doing business that helps us to disrupt that cruise missile market. And uh, lastly, uh, could you tell our viewers what's uh, next for uh, 
uh, Rackham, and uh, What's Extra Coast buyer. Sure. So we are obviously interested in the international market. We think that that's extremely important. We're uh, in discussions with you know multiple different customers along that way, but we're also working at other things in the missile market because we know that there's great need to take the lessons learned here about affordable mass and apply them to different mission sets. So we have a, a great engineering team, a great senior leadership team that uh, supports all of us that is finding different ways to take this different way of doing business and bring it to markets uh, in the missile space that are ripe for disruption. Thank you. You bet. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.